Welcome to the full Sarer beginner guide after one of the biggest updates uh, Sarer have ever launched. Uh, in today's video I will tell you why you should play Sarer, uh, what Sarer actually is, and how to be prepared for the new update, and how to sign up, and also the best ways to make profit. And first of all, this video is specifically for you guys that have never heard about Sora before, but I will talk about very, very much relevant tips for you guys that have actually played it before, but it's most for beginners. And let's start with how to sign up to Sora. When signing up to Sora, it's a must to use an affiliate link because after buying five players from the auction market or the instant buy house, you will be able to get $20 in credit so you can spend it on other players. And you don't need to use my link at all, but if you want, it's in the description and I'm going to be giving away three cards to different managers that use my uh, affiliate link. And now before we go into more in depth about what Sawyer is and everything you need to know before actually buying cards or just playing free to play, why should you actually play Sora? Because that, I think, is one of the biggest questions you should ask yourself. And I will explain why I started playing Sora. Uh, firstly, it was because I thought, imagine having a market decided by how players perform. That is like a dream come true for me because I'm a football fan. And like, it's a market based on that. And that is that in itself is just incredible for me. But it's so much more than that. Uh, the competitions, I think I've never played a fancy game where more managers actually win cards. And like this isn't like FIFA, like where you can buy collectible uh, players. This is actually uh, a way to earn money if you do the right decisions. And uh, me personally have actually not lost on Sorry, I've actually made some profits. And that is what I love. Your ball knowledge uh, like gets you, like if you have good ball knowledge, the chances of you actually winning on Sawyer is much, much bigger. And if you know those unknown under 23 players that may become one of the next big things in the future, that could really, really uh, help you stand out from the, from the rest. And that is something I really, really enjoy doing, scouting players, watching games and looking at hidden gems. And also, uh, yeah, it's just extremely fun, just to top that off. Uh, like watching, uh, for example, your favorite teams and knowing you, for example, have Bruno Fernandes, if you're a Manchester United fan, Rodri, if you're a Manchester City fan. And that is also talking about Rodri. One of the things I like the most about, about Sora and why I enjoy it so much more than, for example, Premier League fantasy is because defensive actions get rewarded. And uh, like passes, tackles, interceptions, big chances created and everything. I will talk more about that in specific later on in this video. But that is just one of the few things I actually love about Sora. You need to, of course, uh, make your own opinion. Is this something for you? But in today's video, now let's jump into what Sora is. And yeah, Sora added the fantasy side with the collectible side and smashed it together. And that is what Sora simply is. And now I want to just make it a little bit simpler for you guys. So I will make four different steps when it comes to what is Sora. Number one, how to play Sora. That will be the first thing we go through. Number two, what is the scoring format? Because that is a big difference from games like Fancy Premier League. And number three, what is experience? And number four, how to buy Sora cards. This guide will go more in depth uh, as long as we go, but I think if you're new to Sora, you don't need to like uh, know the hidden tips and tricks for unique players, which is the toughest divisions to play in. This video is specifically for you guys that starts on the bottom and your journey to the top. Uh, and starting off with that, we have how to play Sora. And yeah, here we can see the lobby, the main screen. We will go through everything on the screen right now. This is the page you're going to be shown to after you have signed up to Sora and you have chosen which league you like the most. And I will talk in specific about what uh, the best things to do after the new update that will be launched 29th of March. And that is also why I think this time is the best time to invest. So you go ahead of those people playing into the hype. That is just my opinion. I may be completely wrong, but that is something I uh, always find the best to play before the hype or buy before the hype rather than buy into the hype, if that makes sense. 
Uh, and yeah, uh, so that will come later on. Now I will just uh, talk about the basics of Sorry, if that makes sense. And uh, starting off, we have Rivals. That is a completely different game modes than a Pro. So it's two. To the left here we have Rivals, free to play mode for the most of it. And then we have Pro, which is not free to play, if that makes sense. Uh, we can start with Rivals. Rivals is the free to play mode. That is how Sora get you onboarded onto the Pro mode. That is how you can learn how to actually play the game. Uh, and that is just... Uh, first of all, Sora is a five-a-side fancy game. So uh, we can go, for example, to Manchester City versus Brentford. And th uh, then I, for example, take Edison, uh Nathan Ake, I take this guy right here, Jeremy Doku, and also Kevin De Bruyne. Now I have a five-a-side team, I can choose which one of these I want to captain. Let's say Kevin De Bruyne. And of course you need one goalkeeper, one defender, one midfielder, and one attacker, and one extra player. That could be a defender, midfielder, or a forward. I want to captain Kevin De Bruyne, and then you can choose your tactic. Tiki Taka, uh, Yoga Bonito, All Out Attack, Park the Best, and also Gegen Pressing. And this is just, uh, what do you think your team will do? Do you think this team will score a lot of goals? Take All Out Attack. And like this is, um, tells you here what... Uh, and of course, it's not the team, it's only the five players you have chosen here. I think uh, this team will be very good for uh, Hoga Bonito, which is one contest. So I will take that. And then uh, I have made my first um, uh, Sorry Rivals team. Uh, and now we can see uh, the way now to actually win something with this is reward boxes. If you win three consecutive arena matches, you will be able to win Rivals reward boxes. Keep in mind, the first thing you need to do is to go on friendlies and add random people. When you have one, one friendly, you will be able to get five arena tickets and start playing arena. Uh, where you need, as I said, three consecutive wins where you have a possibility to win limited card worth real money and also a mystery jersey. So that is the free to play mode. I've talked about this very, very briefly. Now I've made a video specifically about Sorry Rivals. So if you want to check that out, that will be much appreciated for me and that will maybe help you if you want to nail the Sora rival aspect of things. Uh, and then we have of course the pro section, where I think this will be like the main topic of today's video. Because here are every single tournament Sora are currently having. And keep in mind, this video will also talk about after the new update. So this will change, for example, divisions like Cap 270, Cap 240, Cap 220, those won't be the main tournaments in the future. They will only be spe uh, special weeklies. And I know this sounds a little bit complicated for um, uh, the, uh, you guys that are actually brand new to the game, but just uh, try to bear with me for a second. <coughs> and yeah, as we look here, we have a Premier League in season. I can use this as an example. You, for example, choose to buy five Premier League players, one goalkeeper, one defender, one midfielder, one forward, and one extra player. Then you have enough players to play your first competition. Of course, now there are actually competitions where you only need one Sawyer card, one limited card to play in the Pro Divisions, but that will be removed on the 29th of March. So in today's video, I won't go in specific about that. I want to go into what you will have possibilities to do in the future. And mainly we can see here, for example, Premier League in Season Limited, and by the way, I'll talk way more about that a little bit later. But first of all, you can build your team. Uh, Martin Dubravka against Arsenal, tough fixture, but I will go with him. Kieran Trippier, Bruno Guimaraes, Anthony Gordon, and also Dwight McNeil. The point of this, as you see, it's the same as Sora Rivals. The only difference is this is your own players, this is your collectible players. Where you build a five-side team, so it's the same concept, but the only difference is you don't choose a tactic, and you also have your own players that could be from any team you want. You don't need to choose from two specific teams, as you have to do in Sora Rivals. I will captain Dwight McNeil. Now I have made my first ever Premier League in-season team if I were brand new to the game. And I hope that makes sense for you guys. Um, and now, of course, how will these scorers be scored on Sorer? For example, why is Bruno Guimares 65 in L15? L15 is, first of all, how the players have, in general, scored in their last 25, no, I mean 15 games. 
So this is the average score Bruno Guimaraes have gotten in his last 15 games, uh, simply explained. And you're probably wondering, Bruno Guimaraes isn't the top goal scorer, so how has he gotten such a high L15? And that is because the scoring format on Sawyer is completely different from a game like Fancy Premier League. I will show it on the screen right now and very very briefly explain. If you're new to Sawyer you don't need to go too much in depth about that. I didn't do it and it didn't it doesn't help you too much, but the only thing you can like have as a rule, for example, if you have a, a mobile app, for example Footmove or SofaScore, um, you can just look at when the players perform well in terms of the rating. They score a score in many cases will reflect on that. And like the main things that gives, for example, defenders, midfielders, and forwards a lot of points is, for example, uh, interceptions, tackles, duels won, uh, chances created, big chances created, passes, long passes, passes into um, the opposition half. And those are the type of stuff that, for example, Bruno Guimaraes is very, very good at. You, you can just look at his scores, and that is why I really like Sorer. Players like Rodri. Uh, and um, yeah, players like, for example, uh, Palinja are very, very good scorers on this game. And I won't go too much in depth about each of the uh, each of the score matrix because it's a lot to go into. And if you want, I will uh, add the link in the description so you can go through every single uh, score matrix if you want to do it. And now I think we can talk a little bit about how the scoring format works. Because now we have talked about what you get points for, and I think it's very important now to add decisive actions. That is what you get from goals and assists. It could be clean sheet for goalkeepers in specific. Every Sora card starts on 35 points when the game kicks off, and determined by how good the players perform, their score goes up or down. The maximum score is 100 and the worst score is 0. I will talk more in depth about what the different uh, scoring format is for, for example, all around scores, because that is a big difference from decisives. Decisives, as I said, is goals and etc. And all around is, for example, tackles, interceptions. And the point of this is for example, if my Sergio Gurassi, I hope I pronounced that name right, gets a decisive, he will be jumped up to 60 points. And uh, here we have an example, last game, he got a goal. 60 points. He went from 35 points to 60 points because of that goal. That's a decisive action. If he would have scored an own goal, he would have gone from 35 points to 15 points. And now, let's say, if he had scored another goal, it would have just added 10 points to that. So uh, he would have had a decisive score of 70 points. And his all-around score are what he did besides that decisive action. So that is in this incident, attacking, shot on goal. And then we have passing, he had two attempted assists. And that is um, something to keep in mind. And now let's move to how uh, the experience work. Let's use Jamie Lavalin for an example right now. He has a 9.5 percentage bonus uh, or experience bonus and that is uh, gradually getting better and better determined of how much you play in and also in terms of the collection he is in. For example, if you collect uh, many players from the same team from the same season, you will get something called collection bonus and in this incident we have, for example, Stuttgart where I collect and I have now a 2% collection bonus. And the thing is that, for example, if you're up against another player that has the exactly same player, it's probably going to be the collection bonus that decides which one of you will win. And also, it's very simple. Let's say Jamie Laveling gets a score of 100. Then you need to just multiply that with 1.095. And then he will score 109, 100. And 9.5 points, if that makes sense. I will show it probably on the screen right now as well, uh, just uh, so that makes sense. And if you uh, you know what, I can just show it right now. Let's see my team right here, for example, Premier League Limited here. Here we can see that um, uh, if we go to the leaderboard, uh, and we can go to the first place here. He had Bart Verbruggen, but he had 15% on him. So if we go to the right, we can see that 
his score without any bonus would have only been 67. But because he had a good collection bonus and also a good experience bonus, he is now on 77 points. So 10 points more than the player that would have recently purchased a level 0 old season card, if that makes sense. Um, I think that this is important because that could give you an edge early on. But if you're playing on a very low budget, I don't think uh, that should be your main priority. But that is just so you understand how things work. And now looking at, uh, for example, uh, challenges, rewards pool and also custom leagues, that isn't too important in my opinion. You can go through them and see, but like rewards pool, you can see the rewards pool in the pro section and also challenges isn't that important. It's just uh, an indication of how you're doing and uh, like that's just determined which level you're on. And if you want to... Uh, upgrade your level that could be cool but like in my opinion that uh, doesn't make any changes for how you will perform in the pro section and the rival section but now we can move on to uh, how to buy sorry cards and uh, how to buy sorry cards is actually pretty simple you need to deposit money or if you have played rivals and won a sorry card and you have sold sold that player you will also have funds in your wallet here, where you can purchase new Sorry cards. And let's say you don't have any money into your account and you haven't won any cards from the Sorry Rivals, you can just go here and you can go on, for example, there, and then you can add funds or withdraw. So if you add funds, you just click on here and then you can take add cash or add Ethereum, add cash, and then you can just choose which amount, and then you can just use your credit card. It's very, very simple. Um, but now let's uh, look at uh, how to buy cards. And here we have a lobby, my lineups. Li my lineups is where you have an overview over how your teams have performed and which and how many teams you have actually out there. Market is where you buy players. And here we can see Kylian Mbappe unique is currently out. I don't think you will look at him right now because he's very expensive. And you can buy from auctions, instant buys and also manager sales. If I were you, don't buy any player from instant buy. That is a very, very important tip because this is probably the worst uh, place to buy players from, in my opinion. The auctions is probably the best because then you compete against other server managers of actually getting these cards right here. For example, Dominic Solanke. If we go here, he will probably be sold for 25 0.8 euros. It's of course the new season cards and that is something I will talk about uh, briefly or a lot about a little bit later in today's video where I go through how to be prepared for the new season on Sorer. And as we can see on uh, here Solanke and if we go to instant buy and search up the name Solanke we can see that he is 34.9 euros. So that means that you are, uh, if you would have gone for the instant buy version of Solanke, you would have overpaid almost 10 euros. So please, before you go into the instant buy market, please buy them from the auction market. And also the thing I really like about the auction market is that you get that extra collection bonus in terms of uh, in terms of the 20, like I, I need to show this because it's a little bit complicated to explain to uh, people that are brand new to the game. But let's see, you want to buy a defender or a goalkeeper and a defender from, for example, Real Sociedad, as I have done. Here you can see a Real Sociedad uh, collection. And here you can see you need different points to fulfill to add to the collection scores, as we can see under here. 2%, 3%, 4%, and 5%. And let's go to, for example, uh, Lenormand. Here we can see that uh, because it was a new card, you are the first owner of this card. You get 20 uh, crystals, you can call it. And let's say you, of course, you own this card. He is, of course, a part of a collection. You get 30 points. So if you just buy one player from the auction market, you're almost up to the 1% mark. And what that means is that you will have an advantage uh, above everyone else. So that is something I really enjoy, buying from the auction market, especially if you're planning to partner him, he, partnering him up with another Sorer card. But also another uh, place you can buy uh, cards from is of course manager sales. I like the most buying from the auctions, then manager sales, then instant buys. 
But of course, if the auction is very, very over the value of the manager sales, please go for the manager sales, in my opinion. But here you can scroll through every single player and you can go through the players that are, for example, let's go through Jude Bellingham. Here you can see like uh, from the lowest value to the highest. And um, now I want to, when we are on this page, I want to talk about how the new update will affect this, uh, of course, the different cards, because as you see here, why in why on earth is this card of Jude Bellingham worth 262 euros, but this card 209 euros? If I were new to Sora, that wouldn't have made sense to me, so I'll explain why right now. And now let's look at how to be prepared for the new update. That is launched 29th of March. And if you go here, Sorev actually talked about this as their biggest uh, like transition period for the new update actually starting in August. But a lot of the same things here will be important as I mentioned earlier on in this today's video. But there are some key differences that is very very important for you guys to have in mind. And that is mainly this screen right here. And now Sorer will have different divisions. Let's just do this. Uh, besides, for example, in Champions there will be one division. In Challenger there will be one like scarcity you can play your cards in. And also Contender. So now uh, what Sorer have been for a very long time is All-Star Global. You can play every single uh, team in one lineup. So for example, uh, you, if you have Manchester United collection in All Star, you will come up against players that have mid long cards, for example. But now they have changed that, and that is going to start 29th of March. And how to utilize this, and one very important thing, is to don't buy a goalkeeper from a champion team, for example La Liga, one defender from challenger, and one attacker from contender. That is the worst thing you can do, the number one worst thing you can do. Don't do that. The thing you can do, though, is to buy... Five players from champions, five players from challengers, and five players from contenders. One goalkeeper, one uh, defender, one midfielder, one attacker, and one extra player from champion. And the same with challenger, and the same with contender, if that makes sense. Because you need to have a five-a-side team from each of these divisions. Or not each of them, but at least one. And if you're on a budget, I think you should just prioritize one of them. Which place here do you like the most? Do you like champion the most? Like the top five leagues. Do you like challengers, which is Eredivisie, MLS, Jupiter Pro League. I think this is the Turkish League. The Brazilian League, or the Super League, I think it's called. Uh, the Brazilian League, Denmark League, the league in Denmark. Uh, the Portuguese League, and also Championship. Those are the different leagues. And, uh, of course, the rest of the leagues are here. So uh, the thing I uh, would probably do is uh, to go, for example, in Champions. Because in Champions, uh, of course, the best rewards will be there. And then they will gradually, I mean, go down. But that could also mean that uh, if you know a lot about teams in Contenders, you could have an edge of everyone else. Because the rewards pool, of course, will be less, but there will, of course, be also less players participating in there. And now, as I talked about, um, like for some minutes ago. Why has this something to say with new season cards and old season cards? Here we can see there is a big difference between classic season and in season. In season, if we scroll up here, we can see that uh, in season cards is new season cards, of course. The 23 to 24 cards that will show on the card design, and that is the card design right here. And here you can uh, be in competitions where they give away Ethereum or cash, liquid cash, so you could just take out of your account immediately if you want to. But if you have old season cards, you will only be able to win new season cards to then play in the new season's competitions. And that is also one of the reasons I think this is the perfect time to start, because now you, have, you are on the same playing field as the big Sora managers that have bought many players from the other seasons. You can just join here and buy five players from the new season and have the same possibility as a manager that have played the game for a long time. And that is something I really like about this update. This isn't good for me and other Sire managers, but for you guys that are new, this is perfect. Uh, and if I were you, I would buy five new season cards from one of these uh, champions, challenger or contenders. That is what I would do. 
And of course, the prices will be a little bit more expensive for the new season cards, as we saw with Bellingham here. Uh, Bellingham. Uh, Bellingham here, yeah. Like his old season card is worth, like now, 219 euros. And his uh, new season card is worth 260 euros. And that is mainly because the price pool of the new season competitions will be much bigger. Uh, and that is something to keep in mind. And that is why I think you should now, if you plan on buying cards, please buy the new season cards. Uh, of course, there are strategies where you buy the old season card, but I think um, if you want to have the most joy with the game, I think I would personally have gone, gone for that the new season cards. And here we can see uh, the transition period will be 29th of March. And I just want to show you the price pool comparison between uh, the old season cards, the classic season. And here we can see in limited, which will probably be the place you play, we can see that only the top three managers will win cash. And that is Division 1. It will be a new division system. That will be uh, very good explained on the 29th of March, where, of course, the rewards will be better uh, compared to which divisions you are in, of course. Um, or, I mean, determined by which divisions you are in. And here you can also see uh, the in-season in terms of the price pool, each game week, and also general here. And the point of me showing this is... Yeah, and also here we can see... Uh, in the March uh, 24th to August 24th, uh, this will be the different divisions you will be able to play. Premier League, that is an own specific thing. Uh, champions, as I talked about, challengers, as I talked about, contenders, as I talked about, and of course, these five different divisions. And I those will be removed when the full update launches on August. So I want, or I, like, I don't recommend you to look into this too much. I would just... Uh, focus on champion, challenger or contender. Go all in on one of those if you're on a low budget. Uh, that is what I would recommend you. Uh, and maybe don't buy Premier League players. Like that's, that is in general tip because now Premier League is the only league that has an own game uh, week with a lot of cash in. So I would, uh, in my opinion, wait a little bit with buying those players. Of course, depending on which budget you're on. Uh, but if you're on a very low budget, I would wait with that. And now let's move on to the best ways to make profit. And now I will talk specifically about the transition period and also how Sora will be looking for the rest of their career or the rest of the game. I think it will be a lot better now because now it's a way better entry points for you guys that are actually new to the game. The best, may, the best ways to make profit for me personally would be to collect one team. Decide, for example, are you a Stuttgart fan? Let's say you're a Stuttgart fan. Collect a limited team of those. The most important thing is that uh, you need to have a budget of do you want to play with 50 euros, 25 euros, 10 euros, 20 euros, 90 euros, 100 euros. Let's say you play with 100 euros. First of all, if you want to collect a Stuttgart team, buy a goalkeeper, buy a mid defender, buy a midfielder, buy a forward, and also buy extra player that plays. So you can start with. Uh, like the worst thing you can do is to buy three attackers from Stuttgart and then you have used all your budget on them and you can't use them. That is the worst thing to do. So that would be my plan if I were new. Try to get up to that 3% collection bonus mark, as you can see here. And the reason for me uh, suggest, should, suggesting this is because I have done it myself. So like you can see here that I have a lot of collections here. A lot and that is why I actually think that is the best strategy to go with. And now, of course, you should probably start in limited. And for example, you can see here with Bologna, for example. Let's uh, say you buy Skorupski, let's say you buy uh, Kalafiori, and you buy Xerxes, uh, Urbanski, and yes, uh, not Jesper Carlsson, but uh, Ursulini. And then you have five players that probably start every single game that can play in the champions divisions. And the thing I really like with this strategy is if, for example, Bologna win 5 nil or 3 nil or 4 nil your players will most likely have a very, very good scores. And uh, that is a strategy that go big or go home. If Bologna lose 5-0 or 4-0 or 3-0, you will win nothing that week probably. But you ha will have those weeks where you are, uh, where you have a team which have actually performed way over the expectations. And if you have five players from that team, the chance of you actually winning is way higher 
Then, for example, if you only had the goalkeeper and then a defender from another team, midfielder from another team, forward from another team, the chance of all of those players combining getting those high scores in the same game week is very low in my opinion. So that is, of course, something you need to take into consideration. And I don't want to talk too much about like the strategies because that is something that is the most fun. Find your own ways, find your own strategy. But like. Uh, that is the strategy to say collect one team. Your strategy is to find which team you like the most, which team you think have underperformed, which team do you think you will get the best ROI in. ROI in, I mean. And uh, of course, how much you make on the team in terms of how much you have spent, if that makes sense. Uh, if you have spent 10, uh, let's say 50 euros on the team and you, uh, for example, win. Uh, 60 euros, you will have a 120% in ROI, if that makes sense. Um, so the best ways to make profit after the new update is doing that and, like in my opinion, either going all in on... It is actually to go all in on one scarcity. For example here, go all in on champion, challenger or... Uh, or uh, contender and then nail that scarcity. That is so important. Nail it. We can scroll down and just look at it here. Um, nail one of those. That is my biggest tip for you guys that are brand new. Nail it. And in terms of players you should sign, we can go a quick look through my gallery to look at what I'm currently going for if you want to take uh, this into consideration when you buy your players. Of course, I play in Rare and Limited. Rare will, of course, be 10 times, normally 10 times as much as Limited. Just keep that in mind. So if you, for example, want Gurasi, he will probably be worth a little over 20 euros in Limited. And here we can see that I'm currently having an attacking stack from Stuttgart and a defensive stack from, uh, if we scroll down here, from... Um, uh, from Real Sociedad, as we can see right here. Uh, Alex Ramiro have the goalkeeper and also uh, the center back from that club. And that is currently my strategy. And I have also a lot of limited players from the Champion Europe teams. I have uh, collections here. We can go over here as well. And uh, we ha I have a collection from Newcastle, Stuttgart, Real Sociedad, Bologna and also Brest. Because I want to target the Champions scarcity or the champion competitions where there will be a division system where like your performance will determine which division you will be in of course that is like another topic i could go into uh, but like i think if i'm going to start talking about how to perform specifically in the division system that will most likely be a video for another time because now i talked way too much i hope this video helped you and Please, if you have any questions, leave it in the comments. I may have skipped something important, um, but I think I have covered the most important things when it comes to starting your solar account and things you need to have in mind when actually purchasing players or just playing free to play. Because this video was mainly about the pro, um, pro what is called uh, the pro side of solar. As you can see here, of course, there are a difference between rivals and pro, and. The thing is, I have made a video specific about rivals. That will probably show up either here or there if I'm able to fix it. And I hope you enjoyed this video. I make uh, sorry videos each day, so if you're new and want to watch more videos like this, just remember to subscribe. And I will see you in the next one. Bye bye and take care. Peace.